Ryan Mallory here, and since the beginning of this year, for the past five months, we have been in a stock market crash. But over the last few days, we've seen the market start to base, and now it's starting to break out of that base and put together a bear market rally. Perhaps it's just a dead cat bounce, but what can we expect from this market rally? How high can it go? Can it go back to all-time highs? And what does history suggest? about these bear market rallies and how high they just might go. We're gonna talk about all that here in this video, but first, make sure that you pound the like button, subscribe to this channel so you can get all the notifications and click the join button down below so you can get my stock market research each and every day. So with the S&P 500 up 2% today, with the NASDAQ up 2.8 and then Russell 2000 up 3.2%, oh, what yeah. can we expect here? Should we just start buying up all the stocks here, the ones that have been sold off most, and think that they're just gonna go right back up to where they were back in November and December? What I wanna do here is I wanna use some Fibonacci retracements. We've used them for the way up and they've been very helpful for showing us the projections of what a stock market crash could eventually look like throughout the rest of this year. But when you're getting into these counter market rallies, where they're bucking the trend of what we've seen so far here in 2022, how high can these rallies go? So using Fibonacci retracements, I'm going to show you what we have seen so far this year with some of the rallies that, that took place in February and March. And then we're gonna go back and look at some of the major sell-offs and what kind of bear market rallies that we saw during those before they actually hit a final bottom of their huge market sell-offs. So lots to cover here. And so let's get right into it right now with the S&P 500. We're gonna look at the SPY ETF, SPY is the stock symbol. And so since the March highs, we have seen nothing but a lot of steady and consistent selling. When you take the Fibonacci retracement here and you apply it from the previous highs all the way to the most recent lows, we have already pulled back about 30% or so of the May lows. In fact, we're getting very close to the 38.2 retracement level. And for those who don't know what Fibonacci retracements are, they're very helpful for helping us understand rallies in the midst of a bear market and pullbacks in the midst of a bull market. Now, typically, you see a Fibonacci retracement fall along the lines of the three major levels. That would be 38.2, 50%, and 61.8% retracements. And with this most recent market bounce, we haven't quite reached this 38.2% retracement level. We also had another sell-off earlier this year. And if you go scoot your eyes over to the left-hand side of the screen, you're gonna see on two different occasions, we saw some significant bounces back to the 61.8% retracement level. In fact, on two separate occasions, we tested them but couldn't really push through that level before eventually establishing new lows in February. So then if you take the retracement off of the February lows using the same highs that were established in early January, once again, you will see that the retracement level went beyond the 61.8% this time before eventually tanking to the lows that we experienced last week. So with that being said, what does a 61% retracement level, since we've already seen that twice this year, look like for the S&P 500? Well, let me zoom out here. Right here would be your 38.2% retracement level. If we get there, I would think it was an amazing bounce that was definitely worth playing. But I actually think we're going to probably get to that 50% retracement level. You get to the 50% retracement level, that's about 423 on SPY. That would be an amazing place to start trying to book some profits and really tighten up those stop losses. If we get up to the 61.8% level, I'll definitely be surprised, though oh, I don't yeah! expect it. And I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit why I'm not as optimistic about us hitting 61.8%. But at each of these levels, there are resistance levels to be careful of. From the 38.2% level, you have resistance here at 415. And then if you get up to the 50% level, there's more resistance going right across there as well. And then the 61.8% retracement level also has resistance levels to be concerned about. But these are the three levels that I'm gonna be watching very, very closely on this market bounce. Now let's get rid of this and let's go back in time to 2020. This was a very interesting point in time because the market was completely falling apart when the economy was shutting down and there wasn't really any major retracements simply because we were in such an uncharted territory. Nobody had ever tried to shut down an entire economy, but there was a small retracement and the duration was so quick. And then you had the Fed bailing out everybody in the stock market. Then you had the PPP loans going on and you had all the stimmy checks. It just threw everything from a market standpoint completely off. But you had a small retracement right here. And then we had about a four day rally. And again, remember, usually your rallies will last a little bit longer than that. But when you have so many things being thrown at the market from a Federal Reserve standpoint, where they're really doing everything they can to 
stabilize the markets. It throws everything into question, but nonetheless, you did have a 50% retracement level back in early March before it finally took that next leg lower. Now, what about 2018? This is the one that I probably find the most fascinating. And this rally started in October of 2018. Check this one out. This was amazing. And what do you notice about these three peaks right here? They're very similar to the peaks that we just experienced so far this year. Look at this. One, two, and three. You have the same ones. It's, it was a, pretty much a identical retracement from January through early March. So going back to 2018, again, you had those three similar peaks in the market before it finally took the next leg lower. You have one major sell-off here in the very beginning, and then you had a 61.8% retracement level. So right here, it goes right back up to it. And it hovered around that area. Again, it tried to test that 61.8% level again, and then it had a complete capitulation in the weeks that followed. Now, what about 2008? Let's go ahead and check out 2008. We're gonna look at it from a weekly chart just because it takes a lot of the noise out of the equation. We peaked in 2007 and we started seeing the initial selling that took place. Now, it may not seem like much in comparison to the broader 2008 sell-off, but it was still a pretty significant sell-off that went right back up to the 61.8% retracement level before eventually taking that next leg lower. So while the first retracement was 61.8%, the next retracement that followed was only 50%. Look at that right there. It stops right at the 50% level. And then we see another sell-off and it takes us right back up to this 50% retracement level. And then you had the complete capitulation of 2008 that ensued thereafter. So here's the thing. I will actually love it if we go back up to 61.8% retracement level. Do I think that we have a, a strong chance at it? Not really. But again, if we get it, I'm going to be thrilled. I expect more of a 50% retracement level because what we have seen over the years is that each subsequent retracement level following that initial 61.8% retracement level, just like what we saw earlier this year, has been met with weaker and weaker bounces. And I think a lot of times that comes with the fact that people become more and more skeptical of the market rallies as the sell-off persists. As we go into the later parts of this year, future rallies are gonna be met with more and more skepticism because traders have been burned so much in the past and they're gonna start giving up and throwing their towel in. But as traders, if we're willing to follow the market and the lead that it gives us, it's gonna to continue to provide incredible opportunities to profit both long and short. So then the question becomes, what would it take for me to really change my tune towards this market? It would be a break of the March highs. If we can break the March highs, that would essentially require a move back above 462 on SPY. That would be a huge move, over 15% to make it happen. But I don't see that being in the here or now. Instead, we gotta look at what we're dealing with and it's a very bearish market that's going to have counter rallies along the way. And we can profit from both the sell-offs and the rallies if we can just position ourselves right. And even if you're a bear, don't be discouraged by the fact that we're having a bull market rally. Bull market rallies are very much necessary to help a bear market. Without them, it's going to be very difficult for the bears to continue the selling because you need to suck in more buyers and more people to believe that the worst is behind them so that they get into the trades only for the market to flush them out again. It's cruel, it's mean, but that's the world we live in. We don't do it. It's what the market does. And we just try to follow its lead because when these traders get back in and they do so naively, they're not planning for the risk to the downside. They're thinking that the worst is behind them and that they're going to make money on the market yet again. But when the market flushes them lower, they're all of a sudden taking losses. They're going to panic sell and then you're going to get that next leg lower in the market. This is why planning out your trades before you ever get into the trades is so incredibly important and why it's essential to your success in these kind of volatile times. So, Make sure you plan out your trade. Make sure you manage the risk and let the profits take care of themselves. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd implore you to pound the like button, subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of all my future videos. And tell me in the comments below, what do you think of this stock market rally? How high do you think it goes? Do you think we'll hit the 61.8% retracement level or do you think we'll fall far short of that? I wanna hear about it down below. And don't forget to click that join button, support this YouTube channel by getting all my stock market research. Thank you guys and God bless.